I can tell you that Volo has written a book called Volo's Guide to Orm Purr. And in this, he toured Orm Purr with Mert the Moneylender, not Elminster. Hail and well met, friends of the realms. I am Ivan of Many Realms, and on this episode of Realms Lore, we're going to be doing things a little bit differently. Uh, it turns out that the man, the myth, the legend, Volo Thamkadarm himself, actually heard that we were going to be doing this episode on his life and his exploits, so he, uh, he sent me this. Wow! And what this is, is a written introduction that he, frankly, insisted that I read. So... For far and wide across this world, no name is a more trusted guide than that of Volo. A little self-aggrandizing, but okay. Volo sets boot in places both exotic and dangerous, so you don't have to, and can set your own boots anywhere you want to be and nowhere else. That's a valuable service, I can see this. Handsome, trustworthy, and unmatched in dogged pursuit of the truth, there is only one Volo and I am he. So follow my pen to enrich your own life travels. I am your guide to all the realms, trust no other. And uh, you can see, it's actually signed by the man himself right there and totally not by a uh, nerd with a mohawk who spends all his time in a fantasy realm or a white bearded Canadian man. Anyway, Volo Thamgadarm. Known to most as just Volo, this experienced traveler is actually a powerful mage and a legendary storyteller. He's most known for his guidebooks to the realm, such as Volo's Guide to Waterdeep, Volo's Guide to All Things Magical, Volo's Guide to Spirits and Specters, and you get the idea. I'll let Ed Greenwood fill you in on the good stuff. Also, Ed designed some exclusive 5e compatible spells that you can get access to through the Patreon completely for free by clicking the link in the description. Volo Thamkadarm is an unreliable narr narrator. He is a tall tale teller and liar. Oh, excuse me. Um, <laughs> a fudger of the truth, um, who's known for spin. Uh, in other words, he, he leaves out important truths that you might want to know to stay alive. So Volo is the scamp who has written many, many, many guidebooks, some of which have been published and you can purchase, many of which have been suppressed, and others of which have been written as private um, commissions. And Volo is possessed of three things. A boldness or recklessness that most people don't have, an extremely hardy constitution so he can travel all over the realms, and a vaulting ambition that feeds that boldness and, if he was prudent, shouldn't. So there you are. That's Volo. Volo Thamp Gedarm, um, to give his full name, and those of you who have been peeking at your realms maps may notice that there's a city in Kalimshan called Volo Thamp. That's indeed what Volo is named for, because it's it's presumed, it's thought, he was conceived in that city. And as a babe or infant, he was certainly there for some time. So he is Volo Thamp <laughs> after the city. So, Ed, can you tell me a little bit about the origins of Volo, both in real life and in fiction? Long, long ago, there was this plan for doing guides, like frummers or fedors or, you know, travel guides. And I thought, this is wonderful, and I can write these till the cows come home. But I told Jeff Grubb right up front when we were discussing the idea that I'd have to write the Volo's guides from the viewpoint of a really unreliable narrator for a bunch of reasons. One... Elminster knows too much. He can't lead, he won't lead you astray that way. And he knows too much about the backgrounds of things. So he, he might tell you, for instance, I'm speaking as Elminster now. Well, you know, the, the, the local legend is that the, uh, this, but the truth is that, you know, uh, I didn't <laughs> want that. Okay. So Elminster knows too much. I also needed somebody who's unlikable and doesn't have the big power that Elminster has as a magical power host. So this unlikable someone can get banned from places. And the band would stick. With Elminster, he'd say, oh, ban me, will you? Boom! There go your <laughs> castle gates, you know. But no, uh, Volo can't do that. So um, someone unlikable who gets banned from places 
would let us leave out big cities that we couldn't possibly cover in our word counts for a given product, such as Silvery Moon, the entire city of Silvery Moon missing from Bolo's Guide to the North, and specific buildings or establishments that we wanted to leave out for various reasons, such as the Yawning Portal, which is missing from Bolo's Guide to Waterdeep. And in this case, it was missing because there were plans for a licensing thingy and a computer game and an adventure module, and they were all being done by separate teams who would not necessarily talk to the Realms team. Jeff Grubb hit upon the name Volo. Volo is named for the real world Volo Bog in Lake County, Illinois, not far south of the then TSR headquarters in Lake Geneva. And I expanded Volo into Volo Gedar. TSR artists provided the look for Volo, beginning with the cover for Volo's Guide to Waterdeep, which is a dead-on portrait of TSR artist Clyde Caldwell, painted by TSR artist Rob Rappel. I set about voicing Volo and developing his backstory in, in game products and fiction, and then a series of columns eventually on um, the new adventures of Volo. So, Volo as a character, I created. Volo as a character name, Jeff Grubb created. That's the real world outside the realm's origins. A lot of Volo's uh, early years and career are obscured from us even today by NDAs, non-disclosure agreements, because there were plans to use him in all sorts of things. And because of that, we sort of avoid saying certain things. We do know that Volo at times has apprenticed under Elminster and others. Um, we do know that he has irked Elminster and others. We know that Volo spent some time as a frog in, in Elminster's pool, and at other times as a as a stone ornament, <laughs> frog and otherwise, um, <laughs> as punishment for uh, great transgressions, because Elminster was just so pissed off at him, um, to use the... Uh, that it was either blast him to kingdom come or no, 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 I will control myself, I will be a mature old mage, and I'll just make him spend, oh, I don't know, 18 years or 20 years or 50 <laughs> years as a frog. <laughs> That's actually something I would love to touch on. Can you talk about um, kind of the nature of Volo being so long-lived? Volo is both a weave anchor and, an un and a chosen, but unwittingly. Mistra needed to hide some of her power. If she's going to be killed and knows she's going to be killed, she has to anchor the weave. And one of the ways she anchors the weave is in things that don't move, like the Athora. And then there are mobile ones, humans and other sentient creatures, dragons and so on. It makes it much harder to destroy the weave. The weave won't collapse when Mistra dies. But there are logical weave anchors like Mistra's Chosen. Well, if you're a foe of Mistra, like, say, Char, you know, and you want to take something down or do destruction, you know who to gun for. But you also have, because Mistra is cunning, unlikely weave anchors like Volo. Who would be crazy enough to vest some of their power in that idiot? <laughs> so you have a few of those. And you certainly don't want Volo to know about it because he's just the sort of man who would preen about it and blab it to everybody. <laughs> I am a weave anchor. I am a chosen of the goddess of magic. Look at me. I need a new suit. But the other part of it is you want Volo to stick around. And what that means is Mistra, the goddess, Azuth, the god, the servitors of them, like the... Indi sentient individuals that we don't talk about too much, but that would include the Magister and various, you know, I, and all of the Chosen, they are sort of standing in as guardian angels for Volo. So when he does really stupid things, they are keeping him alive when otherwise he would pay the price. So that's another reason for Volo's longevity. So can you tell us a little bit more about what Volo might really be like what you might not glean just from reading the Volo's guides or hearing kind of third-hand accounts of, of who he is. Volo is ambitious, or to put it less politely, greedy. <laughs> and he's become involved in many, many business adventures to try and make money, including buying and selling urban real estate in cities up and down the Sword Coast, including Troll Skull Manor, as seen in Waterdeep Dragon Heist. Volo is recklessly indiscreet in his spying and prying, often risking his neck for an expose 
his less than lawful and wholly undignified methods have made him an infamous scoundrel and scapegoat, blamed in tavern talk for far more indiscretions than he ever really accomplishes. Volno has made far more money over the years penning, printing, and selling naughty love stories, explicitly erotic if you wanted to be less polite and more accurate, chapbooks than he's ever seen from his Volo's guides. Uh, Volo always has a supply of these slender tomes with him, released under the pen name of Vel Hilaria the Vaunted, <laughs> uh, whom he won't publicly admit to being, by the way. Vel Hilaria's works include such best-selling titles as Nymphs in Need, bracket of my embraces, and bracket, Shalana slides on the she dragon's scales, <laughs> and the Duchess spanks back. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, <laughs> that's a that's a, a different part of the bookstore than than Volo's guides. I'm assuming. Oh, yes. Uh, well, no, yeah. these, these, are the, these are the sort of chat books that are usually um, taken out of an inner pocket and <laughs> sure. fanned out in front of a buyer and says, and uh, if Want to buy Sarah... a book? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, if Sarah is in the mood for something a little more uplifting. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> It's unacceptable, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess the burning question in all our minds is, are we able to expect more Volo's Guide sometime in the future? When's the next uh, When's the next chat book not revolving around <laughs> the scandalous going to be released from Volo that we can get our eyes on? Well, the short answer to that is I don't know because, you know, the real world delays and so on. But... I can tell you that Volo has written a book called Volo's Guide to Orm Purr. And in this, he toured Orm Purr with Mert the Moneylender, not Elminster. And Volo's Guide to Orm Purr is substantially finished in terms of text, but as for when it will be out, it will be ready when it's ready. And Volo, of course, um, hangs around Waterdeep a lot, so we might might see a little bit more about Waterdeep eventually from Volo. Who knows? So for those watching and listening now, be sure to definitely check the description because I will keep that updated with um, all the new information on Volo's Guide to Orem Poor. Also check uh, edgreenwood.net and you will, you know, get any kind of news about, you know, Ed Greenwood products that are releasing uh, from there. One more quick announcement, though, and that's that we have two brand new designs hitting our shop today. A Kapow. <laughs> Akablui, both of which are centralized around the theme Purple Dragon Knights. Puns. So definitely be sure to check out Ed's shop down in the description and uh, come on, get your hands on one. Or if you'd like to support Ed another way, plus get your hands on extended cuts of these videos, exclusive realms lore, special discord roles, updates and behind the scenes, and way more, make sure to visit patreon.com slash edgreenwood and become a protector of the realms. Are there any secrets that you might have about uh, Sarah Gadarm that uh, might be lesser known by the public that might help folks either roleplay him or... Uh, understand the character better. Here are three juicy little things that Volo either doesn't know about himself or would probably prefer that the wider realms didn't know. Item the first. While working with the one tea merchant Sasani, Volo received a lasting enchantment from her in a blood ritual that lessens the effects of alcohol on Volo so he can consume prodigious amounts without becoming intoxicated. He craftily acts intoxicated to conceal this ability and to lull rivals and opponents into behavior they might otherwise not indulge in. She informed him that she'd done this to, quote, save him from himself, unquote. Unbeknownst to Volo, Sasani wove something else into the blood ritual. 
she's bound to him through it. So if she's ever slain, she can come back because a tiny part of her, linked to her own body, is in his blood. And over time, she can regenerate her body by slowly, carefully draining him. This ability has a side effect. Her mind frequently receives some of his thoughts in a random, confused, fade-in and fade-out manner. She uses this to keep track of where Volo is and what he's up to. This mind meld all has also had an unintended side effect. Sasani has become enamored of Volo. She was well aware of his infatuation with her and did nothing to encourage it, being cold and haughty with him, though she couldn't resist showing him her dry, wry sense of humor from time to time, but she's now falling for him, despite knowing all his faults. She wouldn't mind sharing her life with him. Unbelievable. I was going to say, because I feel like that's pretty common knowledge, that Volo is obs absolutely obsessed with Sasani. <laughs> that's, yep. ri that's written everywhere, but to find yeah. out that it's a two-way street is crazy. Well, that's why she hasn't killed him yet. <laughs> I guess that makes sense, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I feel like but... most most married couples can probably attest to a similar, <laughs> similar idea. Uh, yeah, <laughs> let's just, let's just move on to item the second, shall we? Uh, item the second. During a shady dealings misadventure in an upper room club in Suzale, Volno fell afoul of some smugglers from Sembia and West Westgate, and in his wild escape, he unintentionally saved the life of an undercover war wizard, Nancy Ridorn. She considers Volo a, quote, loathsome worm, unquote, but she likes him nonetheless, and she finds his smell alluring. So she's befriended him, and they, quote, share tankards and sometimes beds, unquote, when he's in Suzale, which is increasingly often. Volo is finding ways to visit her by focusing on Suzeo as his latest urban real estate investment center. Susani sees the usefulness of Nanthe and doesn't see Nanthe as a rival. Item the third, a mind flare by the name of Ixru Tholarkel once burrowed a tentacle into Volo's brain during a tavern brawl, while choking him helpless with its other tentacles. But it did this not to burrow into and siphon out his brain, but to implant an enchanted gem in it. This stone of thoughts constantly collects random thoughts from Volo. Ixru is active in Athkatla in Om, but in hiding there, keeping to back rooms in magical guises, not its own, and guiding a growing network of merchant traders manipulating the city's rulers. It uses Volo as an information gatherer, valuing what he learns in his travels as its own means of becoming ever better informed about the realms. Ixru intends to craft and implant more stones of thoughts when it can find the right targets. <laughs> That's wild. So you're telling me that he basically has a, a, a bug, an FBI bug in his head at all times, <laughs> it's serving a very powerful mind flare. And we're ending the episode a little bit differently uh, this time than I think we normally do. And it's because you told me at the head of this that you actually have developed spells for Volo never before seen anywhere. And these are specific to the character and you're willing to share them now. Yes. Yes, um, I am. So before you, uh, you get started on that, by the way, we are going to include those in the description. Uh, there will be links for those so you can actually get the 5e blocks for this stuff. Um, so after Ed's done explaining them, be sure to head down there and grab those. The first one I can tell you about is Volo's False Arcane Eye. You create a disembodied eyeball identical in appearance to your own eyeball, so you have to have at least one intact eyeball for this <laughs> spell to produce any magical effect at all. <laughs> and it's a solid seeming opaque, but it's a lure or a distraction or whatever you want to call it. So that's the cantrip. Very Volo. Very Volo. Then there's um, Volo's Flatus Nullifier. 
<laughs> God, I don't know what a flatus is. Let me just let it be known that I don't know what the hell a flatus is. So I'm just as excited to hear about what this is as all of you. Okay. <laughs> Fart. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a cantrip that nullifies strong scents. So it, it not just bad ones like farts, but perfumes. Oh. Okay. Um, uh, it could also be skunk spray, you know. Um, but that's literally all it does. It it and it moves with the caster for a brief period of time. Then there's another one called Volo's Soft Landing. This is a cantrip. It is a feather fall, just like the spell, except the feather fall is a very short descent, like the caster's own forearm. But you really use it if you're going to drop coins or a set of keys or something that would make a noise that you don't want made. And then then he's created at least two spells. Uh, at least three spells, but I have two of them. And the most useful one is Volo's Floating Page. This is a spell that captures a perfect image of any page of a book scroll, graved inscription on any relatively flat surface that you have to be gazing at while you cast the spell. And it only captures what you see, so if there's, like, hidden writing there, the spell is like a camera. It's like you hold up your phone and snap an image of something. Except the image is um, a floating in the air, like everybody else can see that there's a, a glowing, glowing little blot in the air, but they can't to them, it just looks like roiling, swirling chaos. You can read it. So you could read a spell off a scroll that you don't dare bring down in the dungeon. Or you could sneak into a magical library belonging to somebody else and open a book and capture just that book. Cough, yeah, cough, see our page. candle keep episode. <laughs> yeah, mm, okay. So, and then the last one is called Volo's Snatch. Again, a first level spell. Um... The floating page, by the way, is a second level spell. Uh, this is a first level spell, Volo Snatch, and you pluck a single item, the size of your fist or smaller, um, in overall volume, that's not in the grasp of anybody. This spell doesn't have the strength to, you know, break things off people's belts or, or bash open. You know, it, it's something, yeah, it's something lying there that you can sort of, and it, and it just sort of flings it towards your hand. And you, you still have to make a, a successful this dexterity check to catch whatever it is but it's sort of like oh that dagger on the table i need it in my hand right now yeah that's yeah. a volo snatch yeah. okay like uh like a like luke skywalker in the wampa cave right <laughs> yes yeah <laughs> and back in 2020 i was writing a twitter lore reply and i'm going to quote myself naked fleeing volo once used this to garner a wardrobe frilly lingerie while racing through a shop after a husband came home earlier than anticipated. I left that out of a manuscript for reasons of good taste that escape me now. <laughs> Welcome back, my friends, to that little feature we call Realm Speak, where we stumble over words, phrases, and names in the realms that you might stumble over. What we're going to tackle this time around is... Wan T, one of the serpentine races, the Wan T, spelled Y U A N hyphen T I. This is a word from real world folklore and mythology, not made up by any game designer at TSR or Wizards of the Coast, but inherited by us because this serpent race was put into the realms. And that's how you pronounce them Wan T. Wan T. Wan T. So if you're, if you're trying to remember how to pronounce them, they're very wanty. That causing Volo pain and discomfort was the only lesson that Volo would learn. Otherwise, Volo would say, ha ah, I got away with it again, <laughs> and go right merrily on doing it. So that was one of them. The other thing that really matters to Elminster...